Okay, gang, welcome to, uh, what is this, week nine, I think, of uh, or Friday painting <laughs> at noon, um, live painting. Always trying to come up with something a little different than the week before, so this week I decided I was going to go with a um, scene that I shot from a hotel room in New York. It's kind of drab color-wise, so I'm going to really do a lot of changing in terms of color. My concept is to keep it the background geared towards more more towards the yellows and as I come up obviously the complement of yellow is going to be uh, violet so it'll be kind of violet although it's not going to be a powerful violet uh, it'll be very dark so we're going to go from light up to dark from yellow up through the color wheel kind of through maybe some subtle gray oranges up all the way until we work our way up to the uh, foreground don't want to say much more than that because if I do, I won't have time to paint this. This was a little bit more complex than some of the other things that I've done, so I'm going to really be hard pressed time wise. But uh, let's see what we can do. Challenges are fun. Okay, I got my wonderful iced coffee handy. I think that's important. And I think the first thing we'll do is take one of these trusty brushes that I usually begin with, kind of these very simple. Um, gesso type brushes. You can see it's been beat up. I need to kind of clean that. When you want to clean this kind of stuff off, off of any of your brushes, uh, get you can get some rubbing alcohol and a kind of a uh, any sort of a rough scratch thing and kind of scrub it off and it comes really clean. You can clean almost all your brushes that way. Uh, so if they get too crudded up and every now and then I'll do that. Now I'm going to pick a little medium and a little terp and I'm going to start with Naples yellow. It's a beautiful Utrecht Naples yellow, and I'm going to add some white to it because I want it to be lighter, right? Naples yellow tends to have a little bit more of a warmth to it than, um, than the pure, say, cad yellow or lemon yellow or something like that. It, it tends to have a little bit more, um, it just works, for lack of a better word, it really works more with other types. So. What I want to do is kind of get it in there and don't worry too much about perfect edges. Uh, I know I've mentioned this in the past, but your perfect edges happen more at the end, whether you're painting really tight or whether you're painting very free and loose. Uh, so the buildings that are way back here, we want to keep those almost the same color as this, maybe just a touch darker. So I'm going to reach over to this um, ochre Maybe, and I have a little cat of orange on my palette. I almost never lay that out, but because of this kind of warm yellow effect, I really want to end up more in that realm. So again, we'll go with right here. So we can see a little bit of value change, a little bit of color, a little bit of value. So it's got a little more strength in terms of its value. So we go there, we go here. There you go, right down here. I'm not going to worry about whether that edge is sharp because it's so far in the distance. I don't ever care. I mean, I really don't. I want it to kind of fade away. So we're going to kind of put this element. It looks like there's another bank of windows that I really want to put in right about here. And I'm just going to take this brush. That tells me where they're going to go. Brush. I call that a brush. Okay. Um, let's move it on down. Go down this way, down this way, down this way. We don't want to spend too much time. You can spend so much time doing this kind of stuff that um, it gets so incredibly precise that you're afraid. It, it, it really forces you to be um, fearful of doing anything kind of slightly loose. So the, the tighter you begin, the more constraint it puts upon your use of the brush. So those are going to be pretty pale. And I could paint right through them. In fact, I'll do a little bit so I don't just kind of stroke through them a little bit. Now, the building on the right, more ochre. And I just put too much ochre. Because we want a little bit of strength in that building. Let's see what happens. 
Not bad, not bad. I'm going to go a little strong. I thought I was. I'm going to take a little bit of my um, raw sienna. We're going to put that into it and we'll go. That may be too strong. So what do I do when it's too strong? I'm going to throw more Naples. Why am I throwing more Naples? I'm throwing more Naples because that's the background color. We want to tie everything back. We don't want these things to jump out at us. We want them to sit back in space. So you're exaggerating color from... Oh yeah, this is, a, this is dealing with color concept, so to speak, you guys. So my overall concept is to keep everything geared more in the yellow hue in that background area. And in doing so, everything is relating to the background, which holds it where? In the background, it holds it back in space. It doesn't want to jump out at us. And that's the whole thing here. We want this to jump out design wise. It's, this got a gorgeous, gorgeous overall uh, graphic feel. Graphic here, graphic here. So it, there's basically two, so to speak, plateaus, two areas, one way back there, which is what I'm doing now, and the other up front with a little bit of creeping as it comes forward. So this is a little stronger than this, which is weaker than this. So I just kind of did lines up and down to approximate where those windows go. I, and I don't want it that neat because I want to, I want the windows to kind of smear into that. I, so I don't, they're just, I, you know, once again, I refer to stuff like this as placeholders. They're just, it's telling me about where I want something as opposed to exactly how it goes. So I did a very quick sketch, kind of sloppy, and some of my lines are going not straight up and down. And so I had, a, I went back and, you know, usually I might sketch it with a little bit more of a ruler, but I'm one of these people that kind of, the more mechanical it gets in the beginning, uh, the more you feel you have to be extremely precise as you progress. And I don't want to, this is not a painting where I think precision is going to help. I think what's going to help is freedom and expression. All right, we're getting enough of that background set up. I'm, I'm checking my time. Um, I want to make sure. Uh, I, now, if I look at this building and I look at this building, it's similar, but it's a little duller. And so I kind of want to use the concept of being duller. So I'm going to mix a little maybe blue or a little uh, violet into that color, maybe a little white to keep it on the gray side. You know, you can take earth tone and brown, but you want to keep the value almost the same as that, which is about here. It's a little bit more of a green quality. So let's get it in there quick. That's, again, this big brush does the work of getting a lot of this information in there quickly. I am exaggerating color. I am not exaggerating value too much. Value is the key. And I, I, I constantly mention this to everybody. Val you can do a lot with color, um, but don't over use your value unless you're just uh, using it intelligently and softening back something. Meaning that mainly you're knocking things a little bit weaker in the background. But other than that, don't get to the point where you're side of a building. I'm just looking at what I see as kind of darks back there. Now, in, in this case, I'm softening the value. And when I refer to the word softening, Truly what I mean is making the value not as contrasty as it appears in my reference. The same would be true if I were on site painting uh, plain air. I don't want anything to be that um, over pronounced. Now this whole plain in here tends to have a little bit of a blue quality and I'm going to take it a little bit darker. All I did is add blue to the same color I was using. The blue by, by blue I mean ultramarine. That's probably a little bit more than I want. I want to kind of I don't want to stray too far to that cool side, which is a blue. So if anything, I might want to bring a little bit more alizarin back into that color or a little violet, either one. So we want that definitely to be darker because that's the shadow side of this building. But at the same time, I don't want it to be so dark that it's going to overpower anything up front. 
And architecture is always going to take you longer, I believe, than anything organic, uh, foliage, anything of that nature. It's going to take you longer. It's all there is to it. Why? There's perspective involved. And perspective involves a little more precision than painting a tree. Painting a tree, you can be off in the drawing because trees could be anything. So, but architecture basically is horizontal and vertical. And some the only diagonals you generally are roof lines. So we're setting up this background. Oh, I haven't set up this building yet. Mistake, mistake. Should have done that earlier. So I'm gonna go back, add some CAD, excuse me, some Naples yellow into that. Let's try that's too strong. If I want it weaker than this building. Well, maybe a little stronger, who knows? But it's gotta sit back there. It's gotta be really kind of in the pale side. And I don't care how perfectly square some of these edges in the background are. It's, it's the ones that count are the ones as we come forward. Those really, really have to be a lot more um, precise, so to speak. In fact, I kind of like the, the, the loose edge quality of that kind of stuff. And that tells me about where these windows should be, but I'm going to make them even lighter. Um, I want to keep moving forward. So I've got two, one, two, three water tanks back here that sit in a similar value. So how do they sit? They sit slightly darker, slightly cooler than this building. So I'm going to go up, take that blue, maybe some raw sienna or, or yellow ochre, and automatically I can see I'm too dark. So I use my lightning agent, <laughs> which is white, or I can use Naples yellow, but I'm going to use white and cooler. So let me see. Let's try this one first. That's darker than I want, right? I can tell you right now. So I'm instead of white, I'm using Naples yellow to lighten it. And I have to use a little medium just so I can get it to go down relatively quick. Okay, I like that. I can live with that, let's put it that way. I can see some slight reds back in there that I can get into too, but right now I don't have the time. And those are subtleties. Subtleties are an extravagance that you can use in longer paintings. It's very hard sometimes in short paintings to get a lot of subtleties. That truly, and I've been asked about that uh, by individuals about, well, how do you do, a, what's the difference between this and the way you would do a longer painting? And the answer is subtleties uh, and evaluation time, evaluation time. That means time that you can stand back, look at it, and make decisions as to what you need to do. Those are the two. That's something you do, do not, when you're painting plain air, um, you don't have as much time to do that because of the changing light. Unless you're painting, say, on an overcast day or something along that line. Because if you're, if you're painting on days like that, uh, the light's not going to change really r rapidly. So. So I have the three basic structures back here. There's a little bit of light in there. I've got, this is a little bit lighter, so I could actually take a stroke and add indications of subtleties right now so it isn't too flat. Okay. Down below, we get, I need to get this background in there. That's why you see me kind of concentrating on these areas that I know I'm not going to have to go back and put a lot of time into later. So. We're going to come down below this, and it looks like it gets a lot of light, a lot lighter. So I'm going to use more of this kind of color back in here, and I'm just just kind of interpreting the kind of color I think I need. I'm working on a panel this time too, in case anybody wonders. Uh, the pa a panel meaning this is basically a hardboard panel that is coated with a a coat of gesso and then uh, kind of a thin wash put on over it and let dry. So we go here, here, down in here. I just have to kind of arbitrarily put some of these tones down in here because there's a lot going on, a lot of activity, and it probably won't, the activity that I do will probably not be as accurate as I see here, but it will be an indication 
uh, somewhat of a firm indication as, as to what I see. Okay, we're gonna leave that alone. I missed a little bit right in on this. It gets dark on the side too, so I can actually come in with a darker color in there. Um, let's get the tops on those. Let's put the windows in too, because I, I, I wanna kind of set this whole background up so it's almost there. And if I don't have time, there's so much going on that I, I have to allocate my time appropriately for the time frame. Oh, much the same as when I uh, teach a class called Quick Studies, where you know that in 25 minutes or 40 minutes, however, the model is going to get up and walk away. Well, in this case, this model is not going to get up and walk away, but I have to pretend like it is. Otherwise, I could go on forever. You lose a little bit of the spontaneity. Uh, you may come up with a more accurate finish type painting, but you lose a little bit of that spontaneity. And if on uh, these are generally uh, an, another way of putting these demonstrations, these hour and a half demonstrations, are they're basically like large studies. So we've got a little bit of that going on. There's a little bit of a Okay, and I see some lights on this building that I'm gonna put in right now. There's like a, and I like it. You don't want that building t to look too much like it's just a toy, you know, like you get out of a, out of a toy set. So it means there's a lot more surface qualities going on on that built on that piece of architecture. So you want to indicate some of that, some of those changes in surface qualities. And one of them that I see is a big light area right here. And the light seems similar to this. So that's why I put it in there. Some of the windows have a little light ledge. I'm not using a precise brush because I don't want to be overly precise. So I'm using this big old kind of clumsy brush to just indicate, indicate, probably the most important word that you can think of in painting, indicate. Uh, to me, all great painting, no matter how tight or how loose it is, is indication, beautiful indication. So you can start to see, it's got a little bit more character now. That, that building's starting to have a little more character. Simply because it's what I see, and I'm not putting it in precisely, but I'm kind of indicating where I see it. There's a lot going on in those windows, and that's one of the reasons I was a little, I was very concerned about even tackling this piece in this amount of time. Just because I, I can see, when you get a building, um, in order to really make it work, you've got to get enough going on so it doesn't feel like you're, like I said, like you're painting a kid's toy. So these are just indicative marks that I see, little light changes. Okay, it's, at least it makes the building start to feel like there's something going on and it's not a, a totally vacant building. So we got some lights here. Uh, I got this weird shape and it's some sort of, uh, I don't even know what it is. Usually I can try and figure it out. In this case, I can't. I, I'm gonna bring it a little bit more towards the warms and a little bit darker. Oh, that's okay, it's not a bad color. I just took the color I had and I mixed a, um, little bit of an umber into it. Warmed it up to bring it forward a little bit, not a lot, and increase the uh, depth of value so it's a little darker. Now let's just paint the whole thing as a shape instead of, I don't want to break it down yet. And then there's some windows back on the building behind it, which are kind of right in here. I'm going to just kind of indicate them like that for right now. And a little light that breaks in between them so I don't have to do anything later, right about here. Let's do it again. Here, here, that's it. And then 
a little bit of a plain change on this and I added some cat orange to it. There, that's a, not quite as strong as I wanted. Let's try it one more time, a little lighter. I, I just don't want to spend much time doing this one. That's all I'm going to put in. There is actually two. There's another one right here. And we're going to leave it at that. It's not important, so it's going to sit back there. Let's get the tops of these things in, some of the windows, then we're going up front. And I'm about, oh hell, I'm just a little over 20 minutes into it, so I feel pretty good. Uh, again, they're going to stay very white, and very white means very yellow. So I'm going to keep them probably in about that range. Again, what is that? That is Naples yellow and white. And I'm, going to, I'm staying with this brush as long as I can right now. Now, if I were painting a long painting, I still might be using this brush, but maybe not. I, I might have switched over. But because of time, I'm using the brush. I can cover a lot of territory in a shorter amount of time. It also forces me to use the brush and not do what I call kind of fill-in painting, where you're basically uh, filling in between the lines. In this case, you're trying to come up with nice looking edges. Um, I'm going to have some problems with this one I know right now because of the uh, windows behind. But I'll, I know the color mixture that I used, so it's not hard for me to come up with that color mixture again, which is basically white and Naples yellow. So it's not a complex color mixture. And the top of this one has a lot of light on it. And then, it, then there's a cast shadow, and that's what really is dramatic, I think, on this particular uh, lid. Now there's some stripes back on that one. They tend to be cool. So again, I'm still, I constantly am working out of the same pot. What that does, pot meaning uh, color mixture, what that does is help unify your picture. A lot of people want to mix all these colors all over, which is fine. This is what works for me. So. Right here, for example, we have a little bit of a edge right there, a little bit right there. As it comes down here, I'll need I'll make it neater later. So if some of you are just looking at it and saying, "Whoa, is that sloppy?" Um, it is. See, I, I did too much there. Now, when I was a student in art school, and I, when I do that, I immediately go back and go, oh, I got to fix it. And I'd start fixing it. Pretty soon I would, I'd mess it up again, and I'd fix it again, and I'd mess it up again. Pretty soon an hour has gone by, and I'm still in the same spot, and I really haven't accomplished anything, and all I've done is create an overworked area. So put it in, leave it alone, go back and fix it, but go back and fix it another time. If you dwell on it right at that time, and you make everything that neat, Trust me, you'll be sorry. Um, there's always time to go back and fix something, particularly in a long painting. Now, I, I took that color, I added a little violet, I want to go a little darker. I'm going to take a little umber. Oh! Umber uh, brought it out a little stronger than I was hoping. So let's try this. A little bit of a shadow underneath it. It's not going down, so added a little bit more paint, a little bit more medium. There we go. A little more paint, a little more medium. And it's a little bit of a dark sneaking down this side, coming from here. Sneaking down the side, let me see, a little bit right in here. Anything else I want to play with? Maybe a couple strokes just to give a little character to these things so they're not too flat and boring. Okay. So I'm going to go back and fix that right now with this little bit of a smaller brush. Now, basically what I'm going to do is put my little finger down in that window that where I haven't painted. Right there. There. 
I don't want those things to be too perfect. If I make them too perfect, I, that means everything else has got to be more perfect as I come forward. So I want the feeling of that striping in there, which I just think I got, uh, without being too exacting. That is uh, easier said than done, by the way. I know it sounds like, oh, I just got to do that. See, I'm messing this up again, so I'm going to clean it up and leave it alone. I'm not going to, I don't like that stripe on the right because I think it's got the drawing messed up. So I'm going to take and clean that up a little bit better. There. All right, let's come forward. Uh, we'll put, let's put the windows in the building. So, so I got this nice little flat brush. Um, and that's what I'm going to use. It's pretty much a nice small flat like this. The reason I want this flat, take a look at that chisel. That's a window. Right? So take the Naples. I'm going to add a little blue to it. Because it looks like they get cool. But I sure don't want to go very dark. I may be too dark already, but let's let's test it. What do you say? One. Oh, I can live with that. I like it when that happens. It didn't it didn't turn me off, so to speak. That window. There's some of these windows have stuff going on inside of them. That window. And we'll just keep we'll just move it on down. Once I get a rhythm going, it goes faster. One, two, turn the brush over, three. Pick up more paint. And one, I, two, three. And I move stuff around so I can see right now. I don't really care because I only see two windows down in this area. And I added a whole other bank of windows. No one cares. When you're all done, no one's going to look at it and say, hey, you got the wrong number of windows. So uh, something to keep in mind. But take that same color with a little bit more Naples. And I'm going to break this area up back behind a little bit because it's a little bit there and a little bit there. OK. Don't mind that, but I want to put some lights so those windows just aren't a color. So it's just I don't care if I hit them exactly, but let's do see what happened is my paint was too dry. And as I put that paint stroke down, it pushed right into the paint. So if I want to lay it on top, I add medium. I, this is the part about architecture I dislike the most. So right now you're just going for the idea of what you. I'm looking. I'm looking at my reference and using it, not trying to duplicate it. That's the difference between painting and a photo. A photo, pretty much, is what's there. A painting is an edited version of what's there, as seen through the artist's eye. So that, that feels OK. So I want to do the same thing on the, the building on the right. Those windows tend to be a little darker. They still feel like they're in the blue range. And that's way too blue. Blue-green. That may be too green, so I mixed a little orange. Whoops. You hear me make those? That's just, I'm just reacting to the colors I'm mixing. This might be OK. I don't know. Might be too, too. That's going to work. Maybe not. But add a little touch of white to it. Or as I said, maybe not as I just looked at these. OK. One. get rid of those any sort of lines that I left I don't want there this one is gonna have a lot of light in it according to my reference not that I have to have it there but so instead of painting the whole window in, I'm just painting part of it this window is pretty dark 
I'm going to use it. I like the variation. The variation is really interesting to me that some windows appear darker, uh, some windows appear lighter. It just adds interest. See that nice chisel brush, that nice edge? Get, so you can get those kind of crisp edges without really working. Now, if you're a super tight cityscape painter, this would drive you crazy. This would literally drive you crazy because it's really uh, very, very free. So that's why I constantly go back to that word that I use a lot, and that's intent. Know what you're intending. That's, that's, once again, one of those things that sounds, okay, that's fine. But generally speaking, it's a lot more difficult to understand exactly what you want because what happens, and I, I'm literally coming at this from the point of view of someone who experienced this as a, when I was learning how to paint. Uh, what your intent is changes. You say, well, I'm tending to leave, a, this is a, a wash, and then as you're working along, you go, or I'm not intending to leave this as a wash. Then as you're working along, you got you lay a nice wash in and you go, geez, I like that. I don't want to mess that up. And sometimes what I used to do is end up sacrificing the painting for that one little simple concept that I wanted to, to kind of keep that just happened. And uh, I don't do that anymore, thankfully. Nowadays, what I do is try and stay true and keep moving. And if, as I approach completion, it doesn't feel like it works, then I'll worry about what I need to do to make it work. So we're almost done with this, but once this is done, we can start on this foreground stuff, which is where most of the time is going to, uh, is really, it's necessary and it's where it's, it's going to happen. Most of the time it's going to happen up front. I even like the patterning right now that's happening with the lights and darks in those windows. Uh, it again, it makes it creates interest, and it's really what happens in reality. It's not that we're some people pull shades down, other people don't. Uh, sometimes there's a broken window. Sometimes the window is getting a little bit of a reflection. Sometimes they have something hanging in the window. So a lot of different things can occur. spoke about your color palette but um <clears throat> Sarkis was asking if color palette you, color palette okay today. uh it's generally the same color palette i always use i added a little bit the only colors i've really added are i added some yellow because i thought i might need it so far i haven't i and i added a little bit of cad orange hue which is basically cad orange uh, to help me with some of the brighter colors that i thought i might need i again i don't know uh, again, I have violet on my palette. It's a color I've used just recently, just within the past month or so. Uh, and the reason I have violet on the palette is because I'm working in kind of what we would call a near complementary range. With yellow in the background, I'm going to need some strength in the foreground. And what's going to give me the most strength is violet. But I'll never use violet where you're going to notice that it's violet. So uh, I'm going to come in with some of the lights in the windows now. A little right there. There, 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 and there. Nothing here. A little bit of light here. A lot of light here. Notice I'm changing the brush strokes too. So they're not all going the same direction. That again helps create interest. Do it. Keep going. This is the meticulous part. It's it's the part I kind of hate always demonstrating because it's like watching grass grow. But it's 
unfortunately, it's necessary in order to pull the thing off effectively. Just an indication here and there is all you need. You don't need to always complete a line, particularly in a background. You're just giving basic information. Almost there. Told you it's kind of boring. I'm not putting them in everywhere, just where I feel it needs it. It needs a little inform little added information to make it feel like a window back there. Uh, some of the windows down below, just take that color and really smack them in there quick. So we're gonna go, whoops, put some white there. We're gonna go here. Here, change the angle of the brush again it's from a horizontal to a vertical. This side, they're almost all white, aren't they? So let's get that in, that. Same thing below. Okay, so it feels kind of like the image that I see. Um, if I need to lighten the building, I may go back later because I can see some things I might do. But it's in the background. I just don't have time to worry about it right now. I am exactly about 35 minutes in, um, and I do keep track of this. So I want to give myself the next amount of time to really work up in here. We're going to start with this one that's further back than these two. It's damn near as dark. Uh, it's in shadow, and the shadow is casting up onto that roof line, which I, I love. That was one of the things that attracted me, but I do want this light to come all the way down there. And on the other side, all the way down there. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go back to my bigger brush. So I've, so far I've used these two brushes. I'll keep them over here so I know what the heck I'm doing. Uh, we're going to go in, and we're going to get the base of that color and that's going to be a pretty dark color so i'm going to start with blue or violet maybe i, I picked up both i kind of mixed it into the pot it's really strong so if i would put that down now look at that i don't want it that color uh, i want it a little bit lighter so i'm going to mix some white and a little bit of medium into it bring a little bit of cad red so it stays in that kind of dirty violet range i did i'm sorry i threw alizarin into it uh, I don't like it. I want it more blue. A little bit more blue. Let's try that. I like that better. It's still a little strong, so I'm going to mix a little umber into it to just to take it. Oh, I like that much better. Let's do it. This is the what, what I just went through is exactly what you go through in a longer painting, and you may go through more stages and more development of that color choice just because you have the time when you're working in a shorter time frame different you you you're forced to make quicker decisions now what that does is that builds intuitive qualities in in you intuitive meaning uh basically that you just do it you don't have to overthink it uh, and what will happen in time is you will make quicker more accurate choices So there's some interesting colors going on there. Um, I'm going to start pick up just a little bit of it right now. Added more blue and more white, and I can see that right in here. Oops, not light enough. I'm going to take some yellow to that. Some by yellow, I mean uh, yellow, uh, Naples yellow, and we're going to start to add a little bit of. Oh, I like that. I like that. Let's take it all the way down. Let's get some character going into this thing, so we don't have to mess with it later. Be a little bolder. Don't. Don't want everything vertical, so we want to put a couple of horizontals in there. 
and a little bit more at the top. Kind of, in other words, you want to you lay it in clean and then you kind of mess it up because that's basically how I see it. There's there's watermarks, drip marks, all kinds of things. So we're going to leave it. Uh, now we're going to worry about the roof. The roof tends to be lighter as this is, but it is also slightly warmer. So I can take my Naples and my ochre, which is going to be a, a warmer color. See, see, but it's that's a little bit too. Um, close in value. And I'm going to mix a little, just a hint of that blue violet into it, and I'm going to test it. That's maybe I could go a little stronger on the coolness and cool it down just a touch. So it brings just a little bit more blue into it. Let's see. I may want to bring some red too now that I'm looking at it. Let's try that to begin with. It's not as blue as I think it needs to be. but I want to paint into that paint so I kind of end up with somewhat of a soft edge because that shadow isn't a cr real crisp edge shadow. Shadow That starts to feel correct. So what I'm going to do right now is go back to my smaller brush, my Naples Yellow Light, and my White. And I'm going to amplify or strengthen the top of that the way this comes up right here. And that's why I said I didn't want to worry about this earlier. I knew that I could come back at any time and fix it. So we're going to leave it almost right there. That's a little bit warmer than I want, I can tell you right now. Uh, I do want to take and do what I did to the others. So I've taken a little umber and a little bit more blue to the, the base tone that I use, meaning this tone, and I'm giving a, just a touch not sticking, paint's too dry. When it doesn't stick, your paint's too dry. And what's happening is it's not sitting on top of the paint. There, look at the difference. Just by adding a little medium, same color, exact same color. Just, but by adding medium into it, I strengthened it. Now, I can see that that is off, drawing-wise. Drawing will always drive me crazy. Uh, so what do I want to do? I want to move it. I want to bring it over here. And that makes me feel better. I don't care if it gets lost back in here. It doesn't bother me at all. Okay. Uh, I want to leave it alone only because I want to move on to other areas. I actually see a lot more I can add in here. I can add a little stroke in here. I can add some ribbing if I wanted to. Notice I say if I want to, and then I just did it anyway. Uh, we leave it alone. Move. Let's let's keep moving. Very important. All right. This whole plane down here, quite a bit darker. So I loosened my paint up with a lot of turp. Added some blue. Added some umber. Maybe a touch of alizarin because it's not umber wasn't warming it up enough. It's really runny. I, this may be a little too runny, but let me get it in there. I like that. I don't mind the color at all. I think the color is about where I want it. Okay. Just checking things out because I need. I know I need to put a base on this, and I see where the base is. I was just checking. Do a lot of painting through when you're doing quick paintings. A lot of painting through. What does that mean? Paint through, not to. Okay, it's a line that I use sometimes. What I mean by that, paint through things. Don't paint like a paint by number, where you're just painting up to where that edge is. So if you paint through, it forces you to go back and correct and fix, and that adds a couple of things. It adds some beautiful spontaneity to your painting. Um, and it keeps your work from looking too hard edged everywhere. Two of the biggest problems. Now, I'm gonna take that color, add a little bit of blue to it. So I'm adding, drying it off by adding a little bit more pigment and I'm gonna go just a tad darker, not much, but I'm gonna put a base right here. Cause I see it right there. That's fine. Okay, it looks kind of what I see here. That's all I can hope for right now. I can't hope for uh, perfection. I can hope for it. 
I shouldn't expect it. Let's put it that way. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna go with this building here, and in between it, there's a little bit of, of variance. So it looks to me like it's about here, here, a little bit of. Okay, now we're gonna hit that one building. Basically, I'm adding more umber, more violet, and it's still quite cool. Like I. I'm not changing it, but it's one of the darker areas, and it's going to be this building right here. Umber, violet, blue. And with that, it's mixed into the color I already have down. And I don't care if I get variations on it. I don't, in fact, I almost prefer that it's not one clean, flat color. These buildings are old, and there's a lot of character in color because of weather, because of just age. And so uh, it's very often more interesting to intermix two or three colors as long as you keep your values in check. And you can see I can paint, I can scumble. It's kind of nice that I can scumble like this very simply because I can paint over it easily where if thicker paint is much more difficult to paint over. You can do it, it's just more difficult. So I'm going to add a little bit more blue, a little medium, a little white. Ah, too much white. Oh, look at that. Great. That's, I don't think I could have picked a better color than that right there. Ella says hi, and she misses us, and we miss you too, Ella. Hope you're doing well. And yeah, I hope you're Carlson. selling up a storm. One of the best galleries in the United States. I happen to be fortunate to be in that gallery, so. Is this fun? Just playing with stupid colors like this? Jeez, my gosh. Look at that. I mean, there's just interesting colors going on. You, I don't even know if you can see it, this, it but I can, <laughs> which means I'm enjoying it. I hope you guys are. Uh, just some really nice kind of interesting aquas and uh, gray violets, dark. Okay, let's, let's keep moving. Make this thing a little bit more complete down here. We're going to get this one building up front here. I'm going to get that in real fast. Uh, I'm going to use the color I was just using with maybe a hint more warm to it. And so it's umber and a little bit more umber. There's a little bit of a light edge. So instead of painting over it, I'm painting kind of where I think it should it be. It's a little lighter than the building behind. And it it's gets kind of warm and cool as it goes down. So let's start with the warm, a little bit more umber and violet since we're bringing it forward. And let's go right down in here. A little bit more blue in it. So I'm, I'm constantly working with these kind of uh, darker neutrals, so to speak. Now, it, there's some light weathered areas on that. It's brick. I'm probably not going to have time to really indicate the feeling of brick, but I can indicate the feeling of weathered. And it's, it's basically the same color I was using with a little blue and white mixed in. Now, this is the kind of stuff, and I brought this up from the outset, is that in a longer painting, I might go back on this four or five times with different color variations. And in doing so, create something that's got a little bit more richness and depth. It may lack some of the spontaneity. I'll tr always try to keep the spontaneity, uh, but it would have a little bit more interest in color variation, things of that nature. Okay, let's go to that dark, because I didn't get that main building in all the way down. So we went pretty dark back here, right there, right there. Oh. That's what I was after. And right between the two, they're air conditioners. Let's get kind of the light, kind of that dark. 
I've got to get enough in there so I don't have to paint a lot later. What you try to do is you try to set up, cover more territory in the beginning so as you progress more towards finish, you don't have as much uh, to deal with. You're dealing with smaller increments, smaller areas, just trying to be correct with them. But at this stage, you're going for kind of accuracy to a degree. And that's why I'd rather overpaint, or like I said, paint through things. Then I'll go back and neaten them up if I need to. A lot of times the looseness just adds character. And it's those things that sometimes people, uh, artists generally gravitate towards. I would say people always do, but artists generally gravitate towards that kind of stuff. Okay. This is going to have a little light edge on it. We can see right in there. Let's move on over. There's some perspective here to this building. I can see it right there. And it's just a matter of being uh, observant of your reference. It's a little too light. Try it again. That's a lot better, but we're getting there. We're getting there. And we want to darken the same two or three colors I've been using. Umber, violet, blue. Umber warms it up. Violet kind of warms it up. And the blue cools it down. Okay, now the foreground building, that's kind of a fun one. I'm going to throw some cad orange into it. I don't know if that's going to work, but I'm going to throw it in there along with a little bit of alizarin. So I'm really adding a whoop good that I get to see me make these stupid mistakes because um, there we go let's try that a little cooler so a little bit more blue boy once I get get tired of using this brush I love the brush but I want to switch over and start cleaning up some things. It goes up onto the roof, goes a little bluer. This is what I'm saying. There's a lot of elements, so I knew this was going to be a, a, a monster to tackle. There's a lot going on here. And I'm only going to get to some of it because I'm just not going to have the time, no matter what I want to do. Okay, we're going to leave that alone for right now. Let's get it. Let's get up to the two big water towers, and then we're going to get in a lot of this little stuff that really is going to take the bulk of time. So with those, those are going to be pretty darn dark to start with. So I took same color I was using. I mixed a little blue, a little brown, and I'm going to throw a little white into it to give it a little bit of life. Uh, so it isn't just a dark, dull color. It's I'm looking at it, saying it looks too blue violet. So what do I do? I add a little umber, and let's see what we end up with. Probably a little darker than I wanted, so I might add a little bit more white to it. Not that I, I'm not going to want darks like that in it, but right now I don't. That feels better. Okay, let's get as fast as I can. There. You don't want to waste time. I don't I don't want it for a couple of reasons. The main reason I don't want to is because I want to get this where it looks complete by oh in about uh, 40 minutes. Just about 35 minutes. And I'm thinking I can do it. I may not have everything in I want. I added more blue. Oh, I like that color. Let's get, let's get that working. See, I'm using the brush different. I try and not make the same stroke all the time. I'm trying to keep keep it different, keep it interesting. I'm going to throw I don't even know if this is going to work. I throw a little bit of green into that blue because I kind of feel it when I look at that. It isn't radical. It isn't really strong, but it might it might do the trick. 
And this is where you kind of try things out. Now, when I stand back just a little bit, it works a heck of a lot better than when I'm up close. So what that means is hopefully for you, it looks okay. For me up close, I see more problems. Added a little bit more light into it. So I, we want character in these without rendering. These are in shadow, so nothing is really strong. And so you're building, we're building textural qualities and color qualities simultaneously. And I'm going to leave that alone for a second. And we're going to go up on the, the let's take the, the, I guess roof line would be the best line. It's very similar to the color of the, very, very similar. A little maybe bluer, but very, very close. So what we're going to do initially is smack that in there. It looks to me to be just a little bit darker than the uh, the body of the water tower. By the way, uh, I have a fascination with these water towers in New York. Uh, I take tons of photos and I've painted them before. I've actually sold some, which is kind of surprising because I keep thinking how many other people besides me find water towers in New York fascinating. Um, Janet wants to know if you're using ultramarine. Yeah, yes. Ultramarine blue is the only blue I have on the palette at present. Now that tends to have some more green in it. So I, I picked up a little bit of sap green there. Oh, I like I like the feel of that better. I'm going to mix a little Naples yellow, and that'll even give me a little bit more. And I'll mix some more Naples yellow, and maybe a little bit of white, and we'll come in with a lighter part of that I feel on that. It's not one neat color, and this one isn't either. It actually, as it go, moves to the left, it gets probably a little reflected light is what it is, uh, but it changes color a little bit. By painting a flat color, on, on a surface, you, you kind of ruin uh, the character. And if you're painting, I guess, brand new things, slick brand new thing, I guess it's fine. I truthfully generally don't do that. I like things that look like they've had a little history to them, a little interest, a little um, something's happened. They haven't just been put up. Still, not, still can't get that light. Let's try it again. That feels a little bit better. Okay, now let's, as it moves over into the light, we're gonna, we're gonna strengthen. This is where we're gonna change that light quite a bit because it's coming up forward. So I took, I still have dirt in the brush, by the way. Dirt meaning old paint. Um, and that keeps it harm, harmonious unless I want a shockingly different bright light color. This, still working on it. Uh, I've got a little bit, I'm going to throw some medium into it, but I've got, uh, yeah. okay, we're going to live with that. That's, that's not that bad. It's a little stronger. Now I, I can take right next to it and mix a little bit more ochre into it. Now you're looking at that and thinking, holy crap just doesn't work. This is where I cross my fingers a lot when I paint. This is where you kind of think you know what you're doing. And sometimes it works. And when it doesn't, you fix it. So in the center, it's quite vivid. And as it moves away from that center, it gets a little duller. So I'm mixing a little brown, a little blue. But I literally kind of like the, the shock value of that color. I think it's going to work. It isn't right now. So please be aware that I'm aware of that. <laughs> 
this because I know probably some of you are going, oh my God, we're going to knock it down and bring it and mellow it out a little bit. But I've got that nice shock in there just to start with. And the roof, much lighter. That's that that roof line is every bit as light as this area back in here. So we're gonna take the na the Naples, the white, again, mix it up kind of in a clean spot. I'm just using the tip of the brush, so I'm not I'm not contaminating it into all that dirty color. And in doing so, I should be able to kind of come in and go pretty bright to here. Up to the top, over, and we'll get a little bit of a softness in there. Want a little bit of that orange peeking in here and there on that, particularly up at the top. I can see right about here, it gets a little, and I'm going to use that just kind of stroke it in so now i've got the consistency of this light coming down here so we're going to go back in here uh to, on the right side of that it's very very dark so i'm going back with my darkest colors violet blue brown okay, i didn't get it in as my mistake i should have got it in right from the outset didn't so we'll hit this one more time and then we'll come down on both this one, real dark. I'm going to go as dark as I can. Violet, I'm going to throw a little green into that violet just because it's pretty dark. So this is pretty dark right in here. See that? That's going to be this. It's going to be in that range. Ah. Let's soften that a little bit. Side effects help, you guys. The one on the right stays a little bit more on the blue side. And that's got that beautiful piece of light kind of sneaking back through it, which I like. And down at the bottom of this, it gets pretty dark too, much the same as it does. So we're adding, we're build, constantly building back into those because there are stars. They're really... Um, the, the element in this painting that is more or less, for lack of a better word, a focal point. I know people like to use that word, so I'm trying to pick up on it and be cool. Okay. Now let's area down below. Um, I'm going to use this at first, even though it's probably a little bit too clumsy for me for right now. Just basically the, the blue uh, ultramarine and the brown. This is pretty much almost as dark as I can go. It's the nearest thing to black. I keep having to add more. I have to add enough. I could feel it's kind of dry, so I kept having to add a little bit more turp to it. One. Now this is a matter of just looking at your reference and understanding where the darks are. Two, okay, now I'm getting a rhythm as to that looks about right. I sketched this stuff in there, but I did, I sketched so quickly and so crudely that I'm not really sure exactly how accurate my, my drawing is. So I'm just, if I'm wrong, as long as it appears correct, that's the main thing. Because no one's going to look at what you painted this from, whether you painted it on location or whether you painted it in your studio. No one's going to look at that. People are going to look at the painting. If the painting looks correct. That's what matters. So maybe there were six or seven other elements around here that you didn't include. Doesn't really matter. So I was able to paint that edge of that that much. So what I'm doing is I'm building dimension as I go. And I know there's little uh, spines that kind of go, 
This way was my one, two, three, four. I don't even know how many there are, five. Looks like there's less, smaller. That's about all I want to do. Just indicate a little bit of that feeling. There's a big pipe. Now, I don't have to put it in, but I'm going to. And it comes up to about this height right here. Looks like right about there. And it goes down and there's some stripes on it down in here. It's darker. So I'm going to paint that in real quick. This is all this little stuff that I was saying that just takes time, truthfully. And that's why I was a little concerned about trying tackling this one, but I figured, what the hell? We'll go for broke. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, I've had fun. I'll leave that. Any more of that big black shape? I think this. Any more of that I want to get in? I want to get in right now. And then I'm going to paint some negatives. And that painting negatives very often can be very time consuming. Um, I just I just noticed all these extra little dark edges. This back here. Back here, back here. There's little areas back behind. I'm just going to kind of take a, one of my small brushes and very quickly indicate some of those, what we call linear. One, two, three, four, five. This is kind of boring stuff. It's the, it's the more tedious. It's like when, if I paint a Venetian scene, it's like painting the windows in the buildings get to be, sometimes you want to just do a little bit of it and then move on to another area because you can get really, um, I don't want to say overwhelmed, because, but you get tired and you want to move on to other areas. And so, but I want to get enough of this in where it begins to feel like it's complete. Okay, now within that one pipe that I put up there earlier, there's a, it's not that flat. There is a little bit more light happening right about, oops. Again, the paint's too, wasn't wet enough, so it didn't sit on top. Now that sat on top, see it? Okay, so hit a little bit of that, leave it alone. Only because, not that I shouldn't do more, because I, there's a lot more going on, but I just don't have the time. So I'm trying to edit, so to speak, pick the essence of what I see back here, get it in so it ends up feeling complete. There's another pipe back there. It looks like it comes right about there. Down there. These are all negative. Now I want to hit that roof line, this, this color. It's a prettier blue, so I'm going to take more white, more blue, mix it into kind of my pot here of, of muck, so to speak. I don't want to shock with too bright of a blue, but I do want to give medium, medium preference, meaning the medium I'm painting with. Uh, if I really need to loosen it up, I use terp. But terp is a rough medium uh, to paint with at, at the later stages. At the later stages, I generally switch over to either, if I want it thinner, and it, this has a tendency to do more with how you feel about how the paint's going down. Uh, if I want it thinner, I use my safflower oil. You could use linseed oil, anything like that. If you want it a little bit more where you're going to lay it, if you want a thick stroke laid down, you really want to use more of the, uh, what I call this, um, Gamblin uh, solvent-free gel, which I like a lot. 
So that, that has to do with kind of the quality of paint that I want to put down. Right now I'm using uh, the safflower oil. I'm trying to be somewhat precise in this area, but there's a, a lot of stuff going on there. And I don't know that I can get it all in there in the amount of time. So I'm going to do the best I can. A little variation of value. And then the side of that little, looks like a vent. Put it in right there. So we're, we're basically looking at value changes, very subtle color differences. And again, uh, I think was said earlier, I am pushing color a little bit more than it appears in the photograph, even though I'm using kind of the photograph as my reference, I'm just strengthening. Mainly because to me, I mean, I probably could have painted this in a super limited palette and, and made some kind of interest out of it, but I just had this desire to, and I'm not sure why, to want to paint this with a lot more color. And sometimes the reason is, has a lot to do with what you've been doing in the past. You've been doing too much of one thing, you say, boy, I really feel like I want to do this, for example. Uh, simple example of that is, I've got this yearning now, and I've got a feeling next week I'm probably going to do something figurative, because I really am craving to want to do some more figure work right now. So, uh, don't know exactly what, but that's my thought process at present. Okay, same kind of Sorry. <laughs> blue edge there. Let's see if there's any, there's some lines I can use a little bit of one of my tools here and kind of come in and put a couple of linear snaps that kind of work their way down. That's too strong, but I don't care. Uh, I don't have time to, to fuss on it. Let's, let's do something right here. Try and not touch this to the, if I can help it. If I, if I touch it, I'm going to leave a big mark. So it's bracing on the edge and then I've got a fingernail holding it up on the other end. But what we're going to do is that right there. And then, see, there's my fingernail. <laughs> and then we'll put a top notch on this element right here. This gives it the perspective, so I can go that way and then bring it in that way. And I've got, it's a little off, but I'm a little off. Oops. Okay, so we're getting some of the correct kind of feeling in here. Uh, I, I need to go back here. This is what I was more worried about is having time to be able to go back and hit all this background stuff so I can hit some negatives. So this is kind of a blue. And it gets really light so I can lighten it. And it comes down right, right there. And And then down in the middle. There's activity. That, that word I like to use when I see busyness and I don't want to call too much exact attention to it, but I do want the feeling of the activity that I see. Uh, so that is what I'm concentrating on at present. There, there. We'll pull that down. Boy, there's a lot of stuff going on, man.
Where are we at? I've got about 15 minutes and I don't know if I'm going to make it. Generally, I try and pick elements that I think I could get done in the time frame. Um, and usually I have a pretty good, I, I, I'm a pretty good judge of that. I knew that this one was going to be really rough to try and pull something off in the appropriate amount of time just because of the involvement. There's so much going on. Uh, and a lot of it you guys can't even see. It's just, so I have to kind of be a real indicator, so to speak and uh, get it to work the best I can in a given amount of time. So it gets some nice lights. Well, nope. I, I threw some solvent-free gel so that it would stick. There's some grayer ones over here working up a sweat you guys <laughs> what going on there? a ton going on there's just activity it's one of the interesting things about this there's so much activity going on it's really makes it quite interesting um, but it's a type of painting that uh, if I were doing a studio painting of this I bet I would be putting in maybe 20 hours into it um, just because I can kind of see the involvement. I mean, now we're hitting negatives, and I've just, it's almost like you're painting abstractly. And what you're just basically trying to do is indicate the feeling of everything that's going on. I haven't put, I haven't done anything over here. Hopefully I can get to it. It's not going to take a long time. Uh, it's, it's all these little negatives and linear snaps. If I pick up one of these, uh, if I can find it. Yeah. Something like my liner and I mix up blue, brown, mix it into that pot. So it's just kind of a nice dark neutral. And what I can do is just take this thing and start to look for some of these areas like this. I don't even know if that's the right angle. It's not. Let's put another one in. And there's some others. I, I hate to get too much of this precision line work and because it starts to um, it starts to make other things look so I'll put it in sometimes and then I'll begin to take it out I'll begin to loosen it up okay let's see there's little things going this way a little more activity Can you, I don't think they can hear me, but can you repeat the name of Gambling Free Gel? Or Solvent Free Gel, the Gambling. Sure. The Solvent Free Gel I'm using is by Gamblin, and it's a, it's has a lot of viscosity. It's thicker than, but it's not, it doesn't make your, it doesn't make it hard to paint with. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. It's a, it's a medium I discovered a few years ago while I was painting in Europe, and uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it was Cynthia Hamilton, one of the people that was taking the workshop, came up to me and she said, try this. I was having trouble with this one building. She said, try this. And I tried it and I went, oh my God, I got to get some of that. It's just, and ever since then, I've become a huge fan. I don't use Liquin. Um, I know many people do. I've had three different ex-students uh, have terrible reactions to it. 
And so I kind of decided at one point that I would not use it, and I haven't used it in probably 10 years. Um, it's never affected me. I just did it because I found other people were having trouble. So uh, I use a solvent-free gel instead. Uh, it's it's non-toxic. It's wonderful. I love it. I love it a lot, as a matter of fact. It's, it's a, just a, a terrific medium. Uh, I want to paint all of this stuff, then we'll paint the light on the building and a few things in here. So we're going to paint some negatives right now. Um, and I'm going to start, we want to, they're way in the background, so i got to keep it more towards that Naples yellow and white. And we're going to start right here, and then we'll go here. Negatives. Painting negatives. I had a teacher at school that told me uh, that was the thing that, when he was a student, that turned him on more than anything. It's just painting negatives. And it's almost a must in plain air. Boy, there's a lot of activity right there. I just, there's a lot of other little busy windows and crap back in there. Moses wants to know if you've ever had yellow spots caused from the gel. Yellow, in, in the, on the painting? Um, I've never had any problems with the gel. Um, and I've never heard of anybody that has, so, you know. I use safflower oil a lot too. I only use the gel if I feel I need it. And you know, that's a hard, very, very difficult question to answer as to when you need it because so much of it is a feeling you develop. It's not it's not a science. So I can't say you use it when you paint uh, you know, when you paint woodpeckers or something. Uh, it's you use it when you feel you need it is really what it comes down to. And when you need it, that's a personal choice and a feeling that you begin to develop. And, you know, I don't know who it was just recently. I was, someone made a comment, which I thought was very astute, about learning how to paint. He says, you learn how to paint by painting. You know, it's kind of profound, but there's a lot of truth in that. Uh, we can... You can watch, you can, and I think watching is good. I learned a tremendous amount watching uh, instructors that I had, uh, but there's nothing like going back and trying it, falling short, trying it again, falling short, trying it again, eventually kind of conquering the that one goal you had, and then all of a sudden another goal crops up, and you work on that for a while. And that's what we all do. We all, you know, continually, continually try to solve a problem that we've been having. I'm going to take a look at my watch here. Okay, so I've got about 10 minutes, it looks to me like, which I think I can pull enough of this off to call it quits in the next 10 minutes, I think. Activity. Po those are positives. The negatives are the areas in between. There's a positive that I see right here. We'll just put it in. And I kind of like that. Let's just let, let that smear go back through. And then there's some negatives back behind, which tend to be a little darker. And we'll do it this way. I'm using a little chisel brush. This isn't my favorite brush to use. I just happen to have it in my hand. And I'm trying to... Uh, not take a lot of time by switching brushes right now. A little darker. Well, one more kind of long vertical. If it's a short vertical, I don't worry about it. But if it's a long vertical, I'm not very good at it. So I use a, a cheating tool. I 
fix a couple things before I do anything up here because I don't have a whole lot that I'm going to do there. But I do want to fix. I don't. I just noticed that I don't like that um, perspective I've got on that bottom. I want that thing to be straight, and it's not. So I want it to be more that way. And this, meaning the tower, should overlap that edge a little bit more. So I could take this and really slowly bring it down so it overlaps. And then I want to soften that so that it doesn't look too harsh. And there is a strong vertical. I mean, a strong, it's kind of a vertical. It's a diagonal. But I've got to make the paint nice and loose because I'm going to do this one line right on top which looks like it goes about here. And we're going to go from here, straight down. Got to pick it up again, try it again, pick it up, straight down to there. Uh, Betsy wants to know, what the heck is that sheeting tool? <laughs> it, this is just an old um, stretcher bar. <laughs> you can actually, I mean, there are, there are actual perfect little bridges you can use and I use whatever I have at at the moment and at the moment I have th this little stretcher bar uh, yeah just I sorry I, as I'm thinking I don't always complete my senses because I realize <laughs> I'm trying to do something relatively accurate <laughs> um, and we're just going to kind of put a few little of these fe feeling of these ribs in here just so it kind of feels like it's correct but the same on the other side and I have no idea if I'm right or wrong as far as the number of them go it again no one's gonna count maybe an engineer I know I'm smearing over here I can feel it I smeared right there look at that is that terrible um, let's fix that what do you say Might as well show you guys how to make mistakes and fix them, even though it's unplanned. Okay, let's. We can always go back and change it. Any mistake you make. Okay. One of my favorite lines that I like to tell students: "It's only a mistake if you leave it." And by that I mean you're going to make a ton of mistakes. You can correct them at any time. If you leave it, then you can say, yeah, I made a mistake. Another another line I like to use very often is you'll never do a bad painting, ever. You'll just do unfinished paintings. A bad painting is a painting that hasn't been finished. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Figure that one out. A little perspective correction. So it, they feel like buildings back here. That feels too dark. That is definitely too dark. That's a building in the background, but it's way too dark. Uh, I need to make the top of this stand out in front of it. There, and maybe as it sneaks down on that side. Uh, let's add a little bit more character in here. Character is, a, is another word that I use for slop. No, just kidding. Uh, I was going to say it's another word I use for sloppy, but I really don't mean that. Um, sloppy is just uh, an unwanted stroke. It's kind of like, what is muddy color? It's an unwanted color. It just doesn't fit into your color scheme. Perspective, top of the, oh, and there's a window here too. My God, let's get it in. What do you say? So we can have it, we can call it, so it feels kind of like it's done here. There's a couple little windows in the background right here. So we'll put those two little, and then the 
top of this perspective. Let's see if we can get that kind of correct. And it goes from here all the way over. And we get the framework of it going down, much the same as this. It goes down, goes down a little bit here, and down a little bit here. It's a little darker there. And then we get a few little snaps here that add some light to that side of the building and we can almost call it done. Okay, let's get this a little darker right now. It's up front so we can afford to darken it. Then let's get the light on the building which is going to be more in that warm range that I was playing with earlier. Maybe not quite as dark. Yeah, let's start with that. Let's go there. I want to keep it the light kind of consistent. So wherever light hits, I want that light to be a lot warmer. Thus the warm sky. Holy smoke. Let's get, this is called trying to stretch myself and make it all come together. I should be done right now. I, I don't like to take, I, I know that one of the things I learned about demonstrating um, is that it's, there's some things that are just boring to watch. I know from watching. Uh, you know, painting all those windows in. Once you've seen me do one, you could, but it takes time. And that's the one thing that kind of bothers me is it does take time. So let's get the little light in and it goes cool and it goes warm. I'll show you what I mean. Very much in the blue range. And then it goes into light. So we're going back to white maples, enough medium so it'll sit on top, and you put a little light in there. Light into shadow, same as this. So I got it too, I got the value contrast a little too strong here. So I'm going to lighten up the, the, light, the shadow side of it just a little bit to, so the shadow contrast it will not be as severe. So there's light to shadow there. All this is working. There's a lot more little tiny things that I can add in that I see going on. And it's, this is, you can have kind of some fun and just make some marks. Some of them will have meaning, some of them don't. One, two, three, do I see any more? Yeah, right here I see one. I see a little bit back up in here. This looks a little vacant, like it needs a little something. Um, top of that, there's a, there's little top notches on the top of them, which I have not put on. So we're going to do this one first. And this one. Okay, now one of the things that I did is I'm going to do one or two little things. I want the lightest part to be right in the middle. So I'm going to take white, a lot of the um, solvent free gel, a lot of white, and I'm going to really amplify right there. And you guys can see that how much I lightened that. Um, I can do, because these things are I call them my stars, but they're the they're the commands the most attention. So I can. This is where I would spend time on a studio painting, is going back and adding a lot of this interesting kind of character that I begin to see in here. I see it from the bottom up. So I, you know, I started with that really bright color that shocked the heck out of some people, probably, 
Uh, and I've subdued that substantially by just bringing some of these other tones into it. But it, I, it's there's enough strength underneath, I feel, to make it more or less work. So I think we're pretty close to what I would call, believe me, I wouldn't call it done, but I'd call it a demo. <laughs> let's, let's call it a demo as opposed to a complete painting. Um, like I said, I think what I'm going to, I've had this yearning. Uh, I know I've been doing these for about eight or nine weeks, and I, I really haven't done a strong, I've put figures in environment, and I, I, I have this yearning to do a little bit more of a figurative piece. So I don't know if it's going to be a figure in environment or a, just a figure with a nice pose. I, I will see how I feel as the week goes along. So what I hope is that all of you guys are having fun, getting some painting done, learning. Uh, that's how it's painting is just a process of, of practicing and learning much the same as all of you uh, musicians out there. Um, you know, it's the same thing with that. So it's not that there's a magic bullet that I can give you or a magic potion or if you read this book, you'll be a great painter. Uh, there's you'll get tidbits of information everywhere. Probably hopefully you're getting that here and in, in going on and, and getting a lot of practice down, you're just going to improve greatly. Uh, have fun practicing. Truthfully, have fun practicing. I can't say that enough. I say it again. Have fun practicing. Uh, just because it is. You know, with, like I said, if they come out good, great. If it doesn't come out good, hopefully you learn something because that's what this whole thing's about is learning and getting better. And uh, all of you that have this huge desire to want to be a great painter, strong painter, if you just keep practicing, I'm not telling you you're going to be a great painter, but I will tell you you're going to be a good painter. Uh, no one can tell who's going to be great and who isn't, but you will be good. And literally, that's what we're all striving for. And each time we paint, what we want to do is do get a little bit better. So with pretty much that in mind, uh, I think I keep seeing things that I could add. I can add a little bit more life to this kind of sloppy, just it looked a little flat to me. Same with this one. This one looks a little flat and I can add some lights that tend to have a little bit more life to them. Again, these are the things that you do if you have more time. I was thinking those could go lighter because they're farther back. Since, since you don't have more time, you do what you can, which is what I'm doing. I don't like this. I think it needs more blue. I think I said that right at the outset uh, when I first put that in. So. I'm actually going on with a little bit of a grayer color, which has more blue in it. And adding more of that character. So it begins to feel in that shadow, bring it all the way over to the edge there. And so you can kind of see this has a little bit of life, uh, a little bit of interest, hopefully a lot more color than uh, the reference I was using, because that was my goal. My goal in this was to take the reference and give it more life through color, color variance, so to speak, because um, I, I just felt that it had potential. You know, it, it, I could have taken it the other way and kept a very narrow palette, but this was uh, more challenging and a little bit more fun. I have not stepped back at this point. Um, I step back and see if anything really bothers me as I'm standing back. Uh, a few little things bother me, but nothing great. Something bothers me here. I don't know what. I, I think it's so brown, it's probably driving me crazy. So I might kind of come in with a little bit of a, a little darker blue color just because it's so radically different than the rest of the painting. It's, it's odd how um, as you're working, your eyes go to certain areas and you don't notice certain things. And when you stand back, you see a little bit more of the total painting. And in doing so, you can see things that you didn't see when you were right on top of it. And it's one of the things I can recommend to everybody. Please stand back from your painting quite often. You're going to do a better job almost every time if you do that. Um, and with that, I think I'm going to 
I think I'm going to add more here. No, I'm, um, I could I could do that all day long, you guys. I don't want to. I may put another 15 to 20 minutes into this afterwards, and then I will uh, repost it. But hopefully, this gives a little bit of a different kind of a uh, take on things uh, as to how you kind of reinvent color through a concept that you have in your head, a vision, so to speak, and how you apply that to, I mean, that could be a black and white photo, um, how you apply that to a painting that you're working on. So that begins to work the way I wanted it to work. Uh, I have to look at it. I think that color is too strong. I, I would probably knock that back. Maybe take the uh, take some pure yellow and white. I don't know if this is going to work, but what, let's, and even start to add a little bit more light back in the sky so that I don't have to rely so strongly on just the Naples. Just break that sky up so, oh, I like that better. Weird. Odd, odd, odd how that, you do something like that and all of a sudden it tends to change things. Uh, this bothers me, it's a little darker than I wanted so I might knock that back. Look how you just take, same color I had on my brush. Just push it back in space. It sits back there better. I think that's a little too dark for me. That looks okay, but it needs some more darks into that. Um, that color bothers me more than any, anything else in the painting. It just feels too strong. So if I, if I did anything, I might kind of come back and literally lighten that color a little bit and dull it down. I, I want it staying in the background. So I, this is just the yellow and white back on the same brush. You correct until you're until you're happy with it. Even that little change I did tends to work. Favorite part tends to be right about in here, which is actually pretty good because that's my intent was for that to be kind of the focal point anyway. So um, I feel that's working. Um, other than that, so what started you on the color scheme of the yellow? I have no idea. Uh, it. I looked at that painting. I mean, excuse me. I looked at that image and I said, man, that would be so neat if there was a little bit more color strength into it. That's what started me. Someone else might look at that image. Another artist, this is what makes artists individuals. Another artist might look at that image and say, um, geez, I, th I could almost do that in black and white with just a hint of color. And I'm sure they're right and it would come off good. So it's how you feel about it. And I like doing this stuff and then making adjustments. So maybe this color wouldn't come out as flat. Maybe I might have two or three other colors breaking in on it, like I did here. I started with a flat color, and then I brought, you know, other color variations into that. Um, but I used I used that as a nice strong beginning. So that's about it. I see a lot of things I could do on it. I don't want to spend too much time because I like to keep the integrity of a spontaneous or this is. The concept, it's like a plain air or an a la prima painting that you might do in one short setting. Um, so to change the character of the spontaneity by turning this into a really lengthy finished studio painting would kind of defy the purpose of my overall intent. Uh, so anything I do to it after this, I very seldom put in much more than 10 to 20 minutes on anything after I do it like this, unless my intent is to do a complete studio painting, which I do post online from time to time. Anyway, thank you all. Next week, we'll do some sort of figure, I think. Okay, stay well, stay safe, paint a whole bunch.